Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Ontario Soil Network and the Mosaic Company. Bernard Tobin on the Soil School today, joined by Aaron Stefanis from Mosaic. Aaron, how's it going? I am fantastic. It's a beautiful fall day. You can't ask for more. How about yourself? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Hey, we are standing um, in an alfalfa field, and you've done some research here this summer, and I want to talk about that in a minute. But, hey, it's that time of year, um, and we're talking about fertility and, you know, getting the best of our crops, but also looking at our soil health. And, you know, when you think, put those two together, you talk about balanced nutrition and, and soil health really coming together. Absolutely. And, and I, to reference back to the soil school, we've seen a lot of farmers on here that are, are looking at soil health and the importance of that with cover crops, different strip till, lots of really cool things. And I think sometimes we get blurred on either side. But if we look at soil health and fertility, they really meld together because if you have good, healthy soil, we get good nutrient cycling. And that means a better ROI on, on your fertility because essentially you're holding it, say, in the fall. You're having it available for the crop when it's growing. It just comes together in balanced crop nutrition and soil health are two things that are just synergistic together. We also talk about base fertility when we're talking about uh, you know crops and inputs and uh, I want to take a look at this field that you're standing in here and you did a lot of work on alfalfa research this summer and you started with a base fertility on this field but then you added potassium and it really shows what you can do when you make the move and, and do some fertility work. Absolutely. So we're in central eastern Ontario. Uh, this specific area throughout the middle of the summer, that June, July, was very dry. Heavy drought here. And uh, the grower here uh, took off his second cut and there was barely any tonnage there. And he was very worried about his long-term feed supply moving uh, from now and into the winter. And so he met with his retailer and said, you know, how can I push my alfalfa years? We're in the third year. It is already so struggling for yield. Uh, what can we do? And so uh, called me and we worked together a plan to kind of come up with this trial on, on balanced crop nutrition. So we have uh, two products in here, Aspire and KMEG, um, and we have an untreated check. We have 100 pounds of each, so 100 pounds of each product, total 200 pounds, and then 150 of each product to a total of 300 pounds to see if rate changed anything. And really we're looking to drive yield, drive, drive crude protein, um, try to get more potassium into the plant and, and see if we get a better ROI for this grower. And, uh, and that's what we're kind of standing on here. I'm right in the dividing line here, uh, but we can talk about more of that in a second. Yeah, I was gonna ask you guys, so you've got, talk about the different treatments here. You've got 200 pounds and 300 pounds. You really do see a biomass, and obviously uh, that, that's production of, in the tank. Absolutely, absolutely. If you look at, especially on dairy, you know, if we can drive more protein, we, we grow alfalfa for protein. If we can drive more protein out of this plant and into the bunk and into the feeder, that, that's just at the end of the day, more milk, like you said, in the tank. And uh, so what we saw here is on yield, so biomass and yield, we saw a double in dry matter yield. So a, a substantial increase in yield. The other really cool thing is the protein level. So we know that potassium helps keep the leaves on the, on the alfalfa plant. And, uh, and that is essentially what drives protein. The more leaf we can keep on there, the more protein we can drive out of our feed, the more essentially nutrition for our cattle and uh, for either growth in beef or milk in the tank for dairy, uh, it's just a win all around. So we, it was great to see this, uh, this increase in yield by essentially using balanced crop nutrition. So once again, we're looking at potassium, boron, magnesium, sulfur, um, just a whole gamut of, of uh, balanced crop nutrition versus just potassium. Let's talk about micronutrients. You, you, know, you mentioned boron. I mean, you mentioned how it is really an enabler and it really makes potassium work. Absolutely. So we did a study with uh, Dr. Chekmek from the University of Turkey and uh, really looking at how can we drive more potassium into the plant. Uh, so uh, we found that boron helps do that. So we have a little graph and, and you can see on the x-axis is time and the y-axis is a uh, concentration of potassium in the soil solution. I mean, sorry, in the, in the solution because we did this hydroponically. Uh, so essentially, long story short, if the graph moves down, that means we're putting more potassium into the plant because the concentration of potassium in the solution decreases. Since the only thing that's in there is a root and a plant, it has to go into the plant. So if you can see, as we just have potassium, obviously potassium is moving into the plant just like we want it to. Uh, but when we add boron, we add boron to that solution, we dramatically increase our potassium movement out of that solution and into the plant. So what's positive about that? If we can get 
boron and potassium together, we're gonna drive more potassium into that plant and essentially make it more efficient. And especially in hay, where we really need potassium for winter hardiness, like I mentioned earlier, keeping leaves intact, um, better, uh, better sustainability and drought tolerance, we're gonna get, and, and more crude protein, we're gonna get all of these things being a positive ROI and potentially you know, be more efficient with our, with our potassium and our fertility. So Aaron, it's late September, um, and I wanna talk about you know, what growers can do now from a soil health perspective and a balanced fertility perspective. Gonna be an open fall by the looks of it. Absolutely. Well, first off, number one, we've had weed off for a while. Soil test, soil test, soil test. I hate to copy Johnson on that, but we need to get our soil test down. That is our report card on our base of balanced crop nutrition, and we can make good decisions from then. So if you haven't, do it already. Uh, you mentioned it's an early fall. We're gonna have a, a great opportunity. We're already taking soybeans off. Corn will probably start quickly or at the same time, probably in October. Uh, we already have silage coming off like crazy. This is a perfect time based on the soil tests, based on your plans for next year, meet with your retailer, meet with your agronomist and come up with a fertility plan. If you could get your potassium on this fall without running it up, it just takes one job you don't have to do in the, in the spring away and it helps you also uh, with balanced crop nutrition and making sure that you have that potassium because it's not gonna go anywhere. Phosphorus, for our standpoint, keep it with your wheat. Do not broadcast phosphorus this fall. Keep it to the spring, keep that to a spring task when you have actively growing crops. On the soil health side of things, we still have the ability to apply a cover crop, especially cereal rye, that's a fairly long window. If you're applying cereal rye, put some pot potash with it. Uh, broadcast it on, just give it a light tickle in. Um, you can both then get you know, helping with the soil erosion, making sure your soil is staying intact. You have roots to help increase your organic matter and you're helping with your base fertility. So it's kind of a win all in one application. Awesome. Hey Aaron, uh, great to have you on the Soil Schools. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, no problem. I love to be here. Thanks, Bern. Appreciate it.